when I was first looking at my list of installed games, I had a few video ideas in mind. One of which was a review on this game Crossfire X. I originally trashed that idea because it would have been a guaranteed flop. This was the third lowest rated game on Metacritic in 2022, but on the day I'm writing this, I booted up the game and I was greeted with a patch note that blew my mind. On May 18th, 2023, Crossfire X's servers will be shut down, barely even a year after it was released. Both the multiplayer and single player functions will be completely unplayable, and players who bought items within the past two weeks are entitled to a refund. But as for the rest of us that bought this garbage, we're SOL. But what made this game so unpopular? Why did the devs abandon it so quickly? And was the game really that bad? To answer these questions, let's take a step back and look at the history of Crossfire X. This is Crossfire. It's a first-person shooter developed by Smilegate Entertainment. And this is, for all intents and purposes, just a Korean Counter-Strike knockoff, complete with all of the staples of a high-quality game. Pay-to-win items, skins that turn your guns into things that aren't guns, and anime. Everywhere. This game dominated internet cafes and LAN parties all across the Asian continent, and even despite its age and two successors, the original Crossfire is still massively popular to this day. For almost two years it held on to the title of world's most populated video game, with over a billion accounts registered. Billions. With a B. Crossfire's popularity in the gaming scene branched out into other media as well. There's an official movie in the works, and it even had a TV miniseries that achieved mainstream success. However, despite its surging popularity overseas, it never reached the US market. Naturally, seeing this much success, Smilegate said, We've got to have money, and got right to work developing a grittier spin-off to be released in America. It aimed to merge all of the elements that made the most successful console FPS games thrive, but in the end, it ended up as just one giant flesh monster of stereotypes and mediocrity. That project turned into the subject of this video, Crossfire X. Let's start with the story. Crossfire X has two separate downloadable campaigns, which were developed by Remedy Software, the same studio that made gaming icons such as Max Payne and Alan Wake. And credit where credit's due, this story content looks leagues better than the base game. But that's because Remedy knew what they were doing when they developed these campaigns. They feature weapons not seen in the multiplayer and have a lot of collectibles to find if you're a kleptomaniac. These campaigns are the main saving grace of Crossfire X, but that's not saying much. It just goes to show that outsourcing can make your game better, even slightly. Remedy reached pretty deep into the bag of mediocrity for most of this game though. It felt less like Max Payne and more like Quantum Break, like they were just trying to get a paycheck. Tropes are littered all throughout, even down to the standard, you take one guard, I'll take the other scene that Call of Duty has been milking for years. Take your target. I'll get the other one. However, each campaign has a different feel, some different mechanics, and decent, albeit generic, stories. These stories hop between player characters, but focus mainly on one character each. While the story details and character arcs are generic as sin, the gist of Crossfire's overarching story is pretty simple to follow, and it's a world I see a lot of potential to tell good stories in. In Crossfire, there are two warring mercenary corporations, Global Risk and Blacklist. These two stand ideologically opposed to each other and have been fighting on for decades. Global Risk believes that people need to be protected from themselves by any means necessary, and Blacklist thinks that humanity would be better without our corporate overlords. These are both ideologically flawed viewpoints, and neither one is presented as more right than the other. I personally love this type of writing, when the writer gives the player a few different ideologies and lets them decide which one they believe. This makes the world so much more nuanced and interesting than your typical Rebels vs. Empire story seen in most fictional media. Remedy did a pretty good job with the world building and characters. I especially liked the dialogue in this game. It was just quippy enough to come off as realistic banter without treading too far into MCU's death by a million quips territory. Remedy cast a wide array of voice actors to make these characters come to life, but some of these performances are really phoned in. I swear, these guys could not decide whether or not they have accents, sometimes even mid-sentence. Let's move on to the gameplay. 
the original Crossfire filled a niche role that modern Counter-Strike is for the most part lost, and that is its casual aspect. Crossfire's goofier items and unranked servers appeal to a younger and more casual demographic, similarly to how Fortnite appeals to both kindergartners and 23-year-old stoners here in the US. Seriously, there are a lot of overlaps between these two games. This Xbox exclusive version of Crossfire has none of that charm. It could be best described as the FPS the gamer character plays in TV sitcoms. The graphics are all washed out and muddy, so Smilegate overcompensated with an obnoxious color filter and called it a day. Particle effects litter the screen with nearly every action and get in the way all of the time. The maps are all three lane mirror image snooze fests, and I cannot stress that enough. These maps are horribly designed. They lend perfectly to spawn trapping and don't allow for any sort of comeback if one team successfully locks down the other. Naturally, the game will throw you into a session in progress if it finds one, which usually means you're just going to join a game that someone recently rage quit because they were being spawn camped. Oh, and the game can randomly crash if you kill an enemy, which is equally as infuriating as it is hilarious. This happens a lot more than you'd expect, but it's still really funny whenever it happens. The aiming feels stiff, aim assist works against you, the weapons feel like squirt guns, and the low player count means that you will only play team deathmatch and you are going to like it. Speaking of, this game's modes are all your bog standard FPS fare. You've got the aforementioned TDM, search and destroy, domination, domination that transitions into more domination. The only mode that does anything relatively interesting is Spectre. And even then, Smilegate could not, for the life of them, come up with something original. This mode is literally just the Half-Life 2 mod The Hidden, but with a full team of ninjas instead of just one, which makes it really unbalanced in favor of the Spectre team. But good luck even finding a match. I couldn't get any footage because there were literally no lobbies for me to join. I was tickled to see that Crossfire had a classic mode. It really just meant that they turned off ADS and Sprint. And yeah, swapping to my knife to speed up while carrying it off gives me a little bit of nostalgia. The game couldn't even commit to its own rule set, though. Putting a scope onto your assault rifle basically just says FUCK IT and allows you to aim down sights anyways. Smilegate's sheer dedication to being the most generic FPS on the market also meant that the original game's crazier weapons were nowhere to be seen. This game's guns are poorly animated, but god do they sound amazing. The AWP in this game sounds even better than the one in CSGO, and I do not say that lightly. Mission success. Despite all of these faults, I felt oddly compelled to keep playing. I think it's because of the sheer amount of dopamine triggers this game is designed to stimulate. Every kill rewards you with flashy kill effects, and multi-kills give you a beat that sounds straight off the synth racks of Kelly Bailey. Last but not least, the progression. This game has a few progression systems. Weapons have individual XP that could be ranked up to unlock themed nameplates. There was a free currency you could unlock just by playing the game, and it could be used to buy new weapons, attachments, and even some new characters. And as is customarily appropriate for all trash live service games, it had battle passes. Plural. While it was available for purchase, Crossfire X's paid battle pass was just broken. I bought the full version of the game when it was on sale which came with both campaigns, the battle pass, and some premium currency to use in its two item shops. Sounds good on paper, but in practice, I didn't receive any of these rewards for weeks after buying them, where I then learned that I wasn't even rewarded for my performance. Nope. Crossfire X's battle pass just tells you that each level is unlocked by an hour of your time, which only incentivized players to just AFK and spawn. At the time I'm writing this, I put around 17 hours into the multiplayer, so, sure, you could put 50 hours into this game and unlock everything the Battle Pass has to offer, or you could tie a rubber band around your thumbstick and let the game play itself for a few days. But when most of the rewards are ugly trinkets and useless currency, does that really even matter? It don't matter. None of this matters. Crossfire X was ambitious to say the least. The tenacity it took to release an unfinished product and then pay content creators to say that it's on par with Call of Duty was just downright ballsy. But unlike the games it tried so desperately to copy and compete with, Smilegate didn't have the resources or developmental competence to make a AAA title. In fact, I could easily describe this game by using a salty Reddit comment someone left on one of my videos. Bad. Tries to sound and look professional, but achieves the opposite. Boring at best, and generally aggravating throughout. 
So yeah, this game is going to die, and you're never going to be able to play it again. There's no server emulation for modern Xbox games, there's no way to play over land, and even the single player content is going to be axed. Completely dead. Yeah, I do have buyer's remorse, but I've got no one to blame but myself for giving my money to a live service. These games are a stain on the industry, and exist solely to prey on people who use retail therapy to cope, swindling them out of every penny they're worth. Gaming sucks nowadays because we got complacent and let this type of stuff go unregulated for so long. Now it's industry standard practice to just release a broken game, rake in thousands of dollars in microtransactions, and axe the servers because they're no longer profitable. Legislation needs to change to prevent this from happening, because at this point, live service games are just legal scams. If Smilegate hadn't focused so hard on chasing trends like three battle passes at the same time and two item shops, and instead focused on making the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay better, it might have been better received. But for now, Crossfire X's days are numbered. It's a dead game walking. If you like what you saw, please leave a like. If you didn't, tell me why. I'm always eager to hear constructive criticism. Subscribe and tune in next time, where we'll be talking about Counter-Strike's various Xbox ports.